Hey folks, it's finally warm enough to start doing some more of our pack t tests, that is precision, accuracy, consistency, and terminal performance. Today I'm out here with the Federal HydroShock Deep. You know, I tested the Federal HydroShock 45 ACP, 230 grain bullet a while ago, and it did pretty darn good. It did all right, 13 and 3 quarter inch penetration, scored okay, but I recall also that I said, you know, there are better bullets out there. So today I'm trying out the newer Federal HydroShock Deep. This is a 210 grain bullet, and we're going to see how it differs from the previous offering, Federal HydroShock 230 grain. 210 grain today, five shots at a bullseye target, one round inside the clear ballistic, ballistic gelatin. That's going to round out all of our tests. Shooting it today with the 45 uh, HK 45 Tactical. Let's go ahead and get started. That's five. Looks from here that they went off to the left, a little bit low, not too bad. Most of them are in the red. Looks like I pulled one out. This is the Federal HydroShock Deep 210 grain bullet that we just tested. And you know, it's very interesting. It turned out so similar to the Federal HydroShock 230 grain bullet. On the bullseye target, certainly didn't do bad. Got one in the X and an overall score of 42 out of 50. Muzzle velocity was 981 feet per second. Slightly faster than its bigger brother, which kind of stands to reason that we could push, or Federal in this case, factory ammo, could push a 210 grain just a little faster than it could a 230 grain bullet. This is the wound channel here. That's one right there. It entered on this side, traveled here, and these fragments are not from the hydroshock. That's from another bullet that I tested earlier. And it ended up right there. That's the bullet. We're seeing a good 13 and 3 quarter inches of penetration on this hydroshock deep. Again, let me um, clarify this, what you're seeing here. I had another round that I fired in this direction earlier. It's been pulled out prior to shooting this. Uh, so that was the permanent wound cavity from another bullet. The largest permanent wound cavity from the Hydroshock. Very early on in its entrance right here. Now when we look at the terminal performance of this particular bullet, this is where it really gets so similar to the Federal HydroShock 230 grain. It's scored essentially identical. Both bullets penetrated 13 and 3 quarter inches in that clear ballistic, ballistic gelatin. I'll remind you that that's a 20% block, not a 10% FBI block, but a 20% NATO block. And uh, both bullets retain just about 100% of their weight. Well, the 210 grain bullet 
retained 100% of its weight, while the bigger brother lost a little bit of weight uh, and retained 97% uh, of its weight, but effectively all of the weight was retained in those bullets in both cases. Now weight retention, by the way, is pretty darn important. Mass is an extremely important part of the energy equation. And if that bullet loses some of its weight, loses some of its mass as a result, it will not have as much energy. That's just pure physics. The other important part of the terminal ballistic equation is the expansion. And both of these bullets expanded quite nicely. The 230 grain, if you've watched that uh, video, uh, expanded just a little bit better than the 210 grain that we were uh, using today. The 210 grain bullet gave us 144 percent uh, expansion. So once again, while this bullet did pretty darn well, there are still better bullets out there for the 45 ACP. We've tested some of those. And right now, the two to kind of try to knock off the top is the Spear Gold Dot and the Sierra Sig Sauer V-Crown Bullets. Well, thanks a bunch for watching, and stay tuned. We've got some more Pac-T testing coming up.